Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel Data Speaks. In this video, we are going to learn about user defined function or UDFs. User defined function in Python is really popular when it comes to making the code block to be reusable and that is defined with DEF. That means definition or defining. The function help organizing the code, reducing repetition once you wrote the code, you can use that for the multi-purpose and make the programs easier to test and maintain. You can test one chunk of code at a time. It's easier to maintain because if there is something wrong, you want to make some updates, you can easily make the updates only on that one particular chunk of code. Functions can take parameters. That being said, you can provide the specific parameters what you want to insert in that function and return the values. After doing some calculations, you can return the value and have a default arguments. For example, if you want to just provide any default values, which means if user or yourself later do not provide any input, the default arguments will be used variable arguments basically you can define default arguments but you can change the arguments later that your later updated arguments would be the, the function would take the function can be nested or decorated you can define one function inside another function so using doc string would help us to understand what exactly the function does and what are its parameter what the value it value it returns so that is why the function is really powerful and really reusable code of chunk in python we use a lot of predefined function including print function type function describe function info function there are many functions that are pre-built in python here we would be learning how to define our own function for our own use cases so let's dive in let's understand how to define the function and how we can use them and what are the key components and how it helps us how it benefits us on making the code dynamic first of all it helps us with modularity basically you can break the problems into smaller pieces you can reuse the code as many times as you want since the defining function is the dynamic way of coding maintainability you can change the behavior of that specific code in one place you can test in the into the small pieces since you don't have to scroll hundreds of line of code to test if it works or not so now in function we use parameter that allows input it sends the output with the return statement whatever variable you define within a function that's going to be by default local so there are global variable that will be used for multiple purposes but whatever variable you define inside the def function definition it will remain within that function so using doc string, you can definitely document the behavior of the specific function. Let's now dive into the actual code and let's learn how actually we define the functions. Let's begin with basic function examples. We will define a function for simple greeting. In this one, we will begin with DEF. Any function begins with DEF. And I will simply say, say hello, right? Just greeting the users and here i would give a doc string so whatever text you provide inside these three open and close quotes you can put double quote or single quote whatever you type inside that is going to be some sort of document string this is called doc string or document string document string is simply to say what exactly this function does i'm going to say prints a friendly greeting message. This is what this function does. And I'm going to type that inside that triple opening and closing quotes. Now you can make that sing single or double too. What I'm going to do here outside, it will simply print the message. Welcome to data speaks. Now functions do not always need to be with return statement. You can also use print statement return is not the mandatory function in Python. 
now here i will run and i have now just defined a function once we define the function say hello now we will call the function to get the output so call the function here and to call that all we have to do is simply say hello so we have to type say hello and i will just not give any parameter because there was no parameter required as we started defining the function if i hit enter here it will simply say hello welcome to data speaks this is what we have requested the function to do and it says prints friendly greeting message so here just to recap we have began with def and we have said what is the name of the function and if we want to pro provide any parameters in it or not and then we will simply print a message says hello welcome to data speaks our one function is defined and here we have a function name we have a doc string and we have a print statement that's all now you can run this say hello every time you want to say hello to everybody or anybody to the data speaks i will run hit run it will keep printing that and that is what is the power of defining the function based on the user preferences now let's take another example with some parameters on it i will define another function with parameter i want to make the greeting even more personal so what i want to say here is def greet and i would give a parameter called name and here I would add a simple doc string that says greeting by name. And then simply I will write a print statement that's going to be print. And I will give the app string here. I will say hello and I will give the name here. So name, welcome to data speaks. So if you define the function just like that, and here what you have to do is greet call the function so you have defined the function here with the def keyword name of the function and you provide the parameter and here i'm going to give the, <clears throat> the name as a value here and then i will hit enter look at that so hello ishwar welcome to data speaks now if you want to put some different name here put jack and you will see that hello jack welcome to data speaks you can put a different name here hello peter welcome to data speaks this is how defining function makes code dynamic reusable doesn't matter how many people you want to greet all you have to do is just keep changing the name here and that greeting will come over here so this is how this is really powerful and really dynamic let's take another example in this function we will introduce return so i will simply say here return value so in this function i will begin with the def keyword and i will give a simple name i will say summation and in that i will simply give two values or two parameter values i will say a and b these are two and then i will take the result equals i will say a plus b so what i want to do is i want to define a function that sums up two numbers i will simply then say return result so this function what it does is i will define i'll provide some doc string here before any statement that i'm going to do i will begin with three opening and closing quotes so in that i will simply hit run hit space and then i will say this function sums up two values the result equals a plus b return the result so i have defined that function and now if i would like to call the function first of all we defined the function now it is time to call the summation function then call summation and give two numbers i will give four and five and hit enter so as a return it gave me nine four plus five equals nine i want to give different number 400 five 43 and hit run and it summed up 400 and 543 and i got 943 here that is how it is a really powerful way of getting any specific 
job done this chunk of code it's called modular chunk of code to get one specific small task done here one small task is adding up two numbers any numbers and it will return the result how about in the summation i would give different value i will say summation i will say jack and i will give some space there and i will provide peter and hit enter what happens let's see it added two string values and it joined it joined basically jack with the peter so it is important that you have same data type when you are adding two values or in this specific function you need to um, have the two similar type of data in function definition you can not only return the one just one value you can return multiple values as part of the return statement so return multiple values let's define that function We'll begin with def that's going to be the keyword here and i will give the name called div and mod and i will give two numbers here a and b just values basically two parameter values that a and b then i will add a doc string here that would be really helpful for at least recording what this function actually does i will say return then i will give quotient quotient and remainder from any of the division activity so i will say of integer division a division b now i will just enter i will complete that and then I, what uh, what this function would do is it will the as part of the quotient it will do a division division b and then it will then take the remainder is a modulo b so that these are the two results and what i want to do is i want to return q and r and you can even beautify this while saying return f and then you can say uh, open close uh, curly braces and then here you can format the result you can say quotient quotient that value and remainder that value it will just standardize the result and if I hit enter, then what it would do is you will now you have defined the function. You will call the function now. You will say div mod and you will provide two integers. So these two integers can be 45 and let's say 23. If I hit run, quotient is 1, remainder is 22. You can again use div mod function because this is super, super dynamic. Any large number, any large number and then maybe any small number. If I hit run, quotient here is 36,863, remainder is 86. So when we did this large number to this, then we performed the calculation A divided by B. So we, what we have done here, 4 million, 4.5 million divided by 123. And we got the quotient to be 36,863, remainder to be 86. So this way you can get dynamic result. Now your div mod can be used anywhere you want to use once it is defined. That is why now this code is reusable and you can quickly make customization and you don't have to necessarily do anything while getting this result back. For example, you want to add one more value. Let's say summation S equals A plus B or you can add more things. And now as a return, you can always add additional value. Let's say you want to add called summation and you can simply add S here and you will get the result. You don't have to change anything. Now look at that. Now summation is, is got added. If I just run that code without changing anything, the summation got added over here. So this is how changing, updating, debugging becomes so easy while you define your own function based on your own needs into the project. As we have learned, defining function makes our code dynamic and reusable. In the other video, I have made even more powerful functions and with detailed explanation about each component. Please do not forget to check. And if you have not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, please subscribe and hit that notification button so that whenever I upload new videos, you will not miss those. And thank you for watching until the last. I'll see you in the next video in advanced function definitions. Thank you for watching.